everyone. Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I am being joined by the crew from The Giving Tree, correct? That's, that's the name of the organization. And uh, Dr. Wynn is the personnel that reached out to me and wanted to uh, express his concern with the worldwide healthcare and how they're going to try and change it themselves. And uh, Dr. Wynn, thank you for joining us. And uh, what exactly is The Giving Tree? And, and probably first off, how did you get involved with it? Let's start with that. Yeah, sure. And thanks, Justin, again for having us. And uh, we appreciate any support. So with that, let me give some brief introductions. And I'm sure later on people can give their backgrounds. So I'm Dr. Andrew Wynn. Um, it's fine if everyone calls me Andrew for the interview. So I'm one of the founders of Giving Tree. John Kelly is one of our lead biomeds. Michelle is our director of operations. And uh, with that, I'll just jump into really what Giving Tree is and how it began. So um, the whole point uh, for our worldview is to be a international Christians organization that works to provide and support uh, missionaries, um, people doing international aid in the most austere places. So what our work comprises of is there's around 70 plus uh, mission hospitals worldwide, which relatively is not that many. And many of them are working in places with barely any running water, uh, unstable power, and very limited equipment. And on top of that, you have a lot of my colleagues and friends that are serving over there as uh, missionary physicians, nurses, and engineers, and all that, uh, really to serve and love the people, show the love of God, and uh, doing that all without a salary, all on support. So it really, um, being someone that has traveled overseas, all three of us have, and have done some missions trips ourselves, uh, the least that we can do is to use uh, the gifts and talents that we have to support them. And that really is the heart of Giving Tree. Excellent. Well, so I know that you guys uh, not only go to those countries, but you also, um, you stockpile medical equipment here stateside. And uh, it's, it's very similar to some other organizations, but yet different. So uh, can you please tell us, like, uh, how do you get your contributions? And, um, you know, how might other people be able to uh, help you guys out? Yeah, of course. And I'm sure John's got some great stories. But in the world of humanitarian work, international work, a lot of hospitals, a lot of businesses will take their equipment, uh, usually the old stuff, and it doesn't they don't know if it works or doesn't work. But it goes, you know, and offloads into the back of the hospital in the truck. And some of it goes to the scrapyard and some of it goes to donation warehouses. Well, for the longest time, a lot of mission hospitals would just take that and kind of send it overseas and fundraise for the containers. Well, the containers cost 15000 just to ship. And then there you are, you have these, you know, missionaries that are waiting there for this precious equipment and half of it's broken. And I know John's experienced that. Um, and I've seen the dumps in the back of the hospitals, just, you know, large collections of trash, really. And so what we aim to do a giving tree is really... Um, instead of sending junk to pull together donor funds to provide excellent equipment, it might not be the latest and greatest revision, but it's the one that will work in the uh, you know the rough conditions. And if someone wants to help, and we can get into that more, um, we really could use anyone with a willing heart and uh, talented hands, especially in the area of biomed as well. And maybe John, you know, maybe after this, John can give some stories later. But that's the short of it. Okay. Well, I will leave uh, contact information and everything in the video description down below so that people can uh, reach out to you guys as they will. Uh, and mind you, this video, people will probably be reaching out for years down the road because that's how YouTube works, is people mm. find you uh, from Google searches and stuff. But so what, what areas do you guys operate in? I know that you guys are like worldwide, but what areas do you guys focus in? What regions? We really focus any, mostly overseas, uh, we do a lot in Africa right now. Um, that's been our, our biggest uh, focus just at this present time. Uh, we also are aiding a lot in Ukraine. Um, those, are, those have kind of been our biggest focus for the past couple months. But uh, we also have some hospitals that we help down in South America as well, uh, in Central America. And I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, but I don't think at this time we have too many in Asia or uh, Oceania, but I'm sure those are, we would be open to working with those hospitals as well, if that would ever to develop. Um, mm -hmm. I know one of the people that we help uh, in Togo specifically, uh, they also have a hospital in Bangladesh, uh, though they oh. haven't reached out at this time. Uh, that's definitely an area where we could expand uh, if they ever needed our help or asked for our help. But 
I mean, that's that's our main focus. We do do some stuff in the U.S. as well, uh, but our main focus is going to be overseas and helping out these hospitals that, as I've seen firsthand, have a pile of junk sitting in a container and you got to sift through every bit of it to Frankenstein one out of eight to get working. Wow. You know, um, it's maybe it's a good thing that you guys are actually going after some of the some of the older equipment, because the things that we've noticed is with the newer equipment, we're having uh, problems with consumables because the consumables are um, they're getting proprietary and, you know, they're date coded and they'll just automatically stop working. You know, older stuff that takes regular infusion sets, regular tubing sets, you know, older equipment generally will continue to work. And the circuit boards are easier to work on, too. I mean, old microscopes and stuff. I Give me an old surgical microscope any day. I, I could definitely get it back up and going. The newer ones, they'll throw an error code in. If you don't have a laptop to, you know, decompile it and read the hex, you know, there's nothing that you can do. But, no, that's very cool. So, John, I got a question for you, man. So, um, when you actually ship the equipment over there, do you guys also offer support on the site while the equipment's there? Do you offer training to the local people? Because, you know, I assume that you guys would be a teach a man to fish type of organization. Uh, absolutely. Um, so I originally wasn't with Giving Tree. I was with the mission agency myself. And I went overseas. I went and lived in Africa for the sole purpose of not only repairing the machines, but teaching one of the Togolese how to train and, I'm sorry, how to fix and repair machines themselves. Uh, unfortunately, through circumstances, uh, that didn't happen. And that was really hard for me just to come to grips with that. That was my goal. And I never even got started, never even broke the ground. But it is where I met Andrew because Andrew was supplying the machines for me in, in Africa. And so we've started to build a relationship and a friendship. And once I came back to the States and I wasn't with the mission agency anymore, he was like, well, why don't you come work with me? And so we started partnering together. And the goal is still now to uh, train and create biomeds in these hospitals in Africa. And so the way that we do that is probably threefold. Uh, the first Part of it is just kind of building the relationship with the person. And I try to be available basically 24 um, seven. I get messages all throughout the night uh, because it's coming from all over the world. I don't know what time I'm going to get a message. Uh, and so I, whatever they need, if I got to do some research, learn about a new machine that I've never heard of, whatnot, I just learned about a new x-ray generator just this morning. I'll do the best that I can to remotely help from over here. And then as I build a relationship with somebody there, kind of start working them towards fixing these machines. Then the next part is to actually go over and do a, a crash course and work with them and train them to be a biomed and help them get comfortable with it. Because a lot of times the biggest part is people are just uncomfortable mm -hmm. starting. Once they start taking apart the machines, they're like, this isn't as complicated as it right. is. There's still, as me and you know, there's still some safety concerns that you got to know. You know, don't, you know, don't touch or cross the capacitor on a defibrillator. You're going to be in a heap of hurt. Um, but it's just starting, breaking that ground, uh, getting going. And then the last part that I do is I create training videos because not all these hospitals have a biomed or even have a local who's willing to do that stuff. And so sometimes it's just, hey, you know, physician, if you want this machine, I can't get there for the next couple of weeks. If you need it tomorrow, this is what you got to do. And it's, it's you know, the basics. Um, I'm not going to do anything complex to, that will put them in danger. But some of the smaller stuff, uh, I create training videos for them as well. And those are being distributed to our partners overseas. Interesting. Well, I mean, there's many ways that uh, we can help. And um, I, while you're talking, I'm thinking, you know, these are easy to solve problems or it, they appear to be because, you know, we have an endless amount of people over here in the United States that are really good at what they do. And then to extend that even further, it's not just about the United States. We got we got technicians over in Europe and South America 
and their their knowledge of electronics and and the functionality of this equipment far exceeds almost any American technician that I've ever worked with. And you know, I interact with these people online, and I've always wanted to create uh, like a live stream, a weekly live stream where people can tune in from around the world and ask their questions, and experts of certain areas will get on and they can answer the questions. And man, you guys are really inspiring me because I've been wanting to do this for a long time. And maybe, maybe I'll actually do it now because I, I have more and more people like in South America who are reaching out to me and, uh, you know, I'm doing what I can, but, uh, you know, I need to just have a little bit of, I don't know, discipline to actually have a regular <laughs> occurrence. But what's, what's one of the greatest, um, concerns that you guys have what's one of the biggest complications that you guys have found so far in your dealings you know in all these other countries you know i would say overall there are just common themes even beyond the different cultures you know equipment's equipment and being in a difficult place is very similar so i would say not having anyone there that can fix anything even a basic electrician's hard to come by Beyond, you know, running water and, and power, you know, it's just having a good piece of equipment. And then also once you get the equipment, because someone will send a donation, it's not having that support like you're saying. And so you asked us, you know, what's a, what's one of the biggest difference makers or impacts that someone could make is if, if there was um, a biomed that was looking for a job, even a engineer at all, having someone that, well, they don't have to, but if they would love to travel, that would be something that we're looking for. Uh, yeah. They could make videos with John and support people remotely and be working pretty much with all these sites over the world. And it's also rewarding knowing that, you know, these places aren't necessarily for profit either. They're providing, I mean, they come into the hospital for like a dollar. So, you know, this is a really, really great opportunity. And so being able to support like a dash monitor, uh, a Valley Lab force cautery unit, you know, simple fixes. And uh, one really quick story that I think maybe the viewers are like is that when I went over recently with another engineer and went to this hospital, these fixes aren't like repairing a million dollar Zeiss microscope. It's like a Valley Lab. And they're like, why isn't it working? And then we look at their, um, you know, their electrode. It's like, wow, that's really old. How long have you guys been using that? And they've been using it for five years. Wow. The disposable. And the reason why it wasn't wow. working was because it was shorted, obviously. And so all you had to do is bring a thirteen dollar expired one, and it started working again. So that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So there, there's a lot of luxuries that I know we take for granted over here, and you know, mm -hmm. obviously, I've been championing uh, right to repair over here in the United States because, you know, a lot of people assume that things like this guy here, if I can't get any parts for this this AED here, that oh well, you know, we can just throw it out and buy another one. Well, it still is useful. And, you know, it's still got a tangible value to somebody. And a lot of this does go to other countries and they have no resources. So this isn't a first world issue for me and, and for most of my viewers. This is a real problem for the entire world. I mean, we'd love to be able to sort, support other people. But since a lot of us biomeds, we, we're not given schematics any anymore. I mean, I started biomed 20 years ago. And there was schematics with, you know, a reasonable amount of stuff that those days are gone. But that's why I'm trying to teach people about, um, you know, being able to look at a board and identify certain regions of a board and what they can do. Because, mm. you know, just just those little key bits of knowledge will get you way further down the road. Um, because, you know, if I teach you this one specific device. That's fine, but what if you don't have that device? But if I teach you a board and how the board's laid out, now mm -hmm. you can apply that to any medical device. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the kind of teacher that I'm trying to be, is teaching people the theory of just general board layouts and stuff, because you know that'll get you further. But guys, um, I'm really kind of curious, how, how much medical equipment do you guys currently ship out? So recently with um, Ukraine, we've shipped three containers of medical beds. Okay. Uh, we sent 30 incubators to Ukraine because uh, I remember having to inspect all of those in 48 hours. That was, <laughs> man, talk about high tempo. Okay. Um, yes. Oh, another one is um, for Kenya. Uh, we love the dash monitors because they're so easy to fix. And mm -hmm. so we sent, you know, 20, 40 of them. And then Togo also has another number. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, we, we, a lot of these are donations. So we've got 160 military ventilators that were very charitably supplied, not completely free, but 
those are all donations sitting ready to send out. And that's, it's a, it's a, it's a privilege to be able to send that out. Cause it's, they're like brand new, you know, from the military. So. Wow. That's incredible. Now I, I have a lot of, a lot of viewers from South America. I, I have a lot of them are all around Africa too. And you know, one of the things that I, I've known is that the people that generally watch my channel are very extremely knowledgeable. And, you know, compared to American technicians, which is why I'm really kind of curious when you said, like, even finding an electrician can be really complex. So um, that, you know, I understand that you, some of these hospitals are probably out in the middle of nowhere, but they're in some of those countries. There are many knowledgeable people. And maybe the key for all of us is just to create some sort of forum where they can help out, you know, their fellow countrymen. Because if you don't even know the problem exists in a certain area, you don't know how to how to help fix. Mm. And um, I mean, I, I could definitely help you guys out with that by opening up a dialogue in certain countries. And, you know, that's that's one of the things about these live streams is that people can tune in from certain regions. But uh, as you guys already expressed, the time zones would be kind of complex. You know, it'd be <laughs> what the middle of the night, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I actually have five different clocks on my iPad just so that I can keep track of who or what time it is that someone's communicating with me. Wow. That's actually a good idea. Cause I, I don't think I've ever set up an alternate clock, you know, cause usually when I go from, from place to place, my, my phone will log in and it's got a new time zone. I don't normally have to worry about that, but then like this meeting, um, you know, normally I'm, I'm a little more punctual, but I found myself running because uh, time zones. You guys are an hour difference than myself, so um, it is what it is. But anyway, yeah. guys, I, I'm really kind of curious. Where do you guys see your outfit going in the next year, like as far as growth? Well, you know, the, what we say at Giving Tree is it's all, you know, God willing, because we don't want to assume the future. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. But uh, something that we do pray for in the vision is that, you know, there's a mindset. This this could be challenging, but I think also really inspiring for people to know. There's this mentality when people first get into overseas work. You know, it's like I want to go and get there and change the world, which that's that's great. You know, and I don't. Michelle and I, we were hiking through the jungles of the Philippines when we were a lot younger. You know, and and you know, we kind of had that. Or maybe I had that, but nowadays you go there and you fix equipment. And people do these marathons, biomed marathons. You're like, they're working for like, you know, three days. It's kind of like, you know, Jesus speeding and healing the people, but it's like you're a biomed and you're doing the same thing at the location and you're tired, but it's really rewarding. Um, and it's a good thing. But then once, once you've been in this for a while, you start to realize that the equipment will break again. Right. It'll be abused by, you know, honestly, you know, a traveling missionary doctor that doesn't handle the equipment very well. And, it, you know, then the people there can't fix it. So the long-term vision is that there would be a couple of um, biomeds and engineers working together in the forum, like you talked about, that would be able to support all these international groups. And uh, it would be a free service to just say, hey, like, let me lend a helping hand, help with this. Oh, I know about that. And share resources as a community um, and then have it be sustainable. And that's the biggest thing that we don't want to go there to feel good about ourselves. That is only short lived and kind of self centered. We want to be there for their well being and for years to come that they can eventually learn to care about their own equipment. Well, that's a, that's an extremely noble cause. And one of the things that I've noticed about, um, clinical engineering in general is almost everybody that's in this career field is generally mm. very giving, like with their mm. time. And, um, wow. One of the ways that, that we do it is uh, with Discord server. I don't know if you guys have ever used Discord before. Um, yeah. I have it on my phone. I have it on my computers. I, I get on there and answer questions. It's like a live instantaneous chat server. And maybe I will um, create a new sub channel on the, the BMET uh, Discord for international help, uh, where people can either ask for assistance, uh, ask for questions, because the, there's a there's definitely a difference between international help and regular help because you have to understand that they don't have, uh, you know, consumables that you do. Um, so you have to think outside the box when you're answering those kind of questions. So if they just post a regular question in a regular biomed forum, I, I don't think they're going to get the answers that are really going to benefit them versus mm -hmm. an international help. It's I'll, I'll talk with the guys that run the discord server. Because I would love to offer like a channel where these guys can get on there, ask a question live 24 hours a day, maybe take a little bit of uh, 
the slack off John over there <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, 24 hours a day, you know, it'll, it'll ring me on my phone and say, Hey, you, you got a question or something, you know, and you can even write somebody directly. If somebody is, let's say a CT expert or something, you know, you can contact people directly. It's, it's a awesome, awesome utility. And, um, I've, I've been part of that for a while and it's growing. And as it grows, people like you guys, uh, can help utilize it, you know, for people mm -hmm. out in the field. And, and, and John, if you ever have a question, man, if you're not on the discord server, I'll tell you what, I only know like this much of the pie, <laughs> but, uh, there's, there's people, the people that actually designed the equipment will be on there and they, you know, mm -hmm. they'll answer questions. And that's, that's an amazing opportunity guys. So, um, Mr. Mr. Wynn, if, if you have anything else that you would like to say uh, for my audience, if there's anything they can do to help out, please, please go ahead and let's let's go ahead and uh, make that plea now, because I'm going to be advertising that uh, going forward. Um, whatever your request is, I'm going to put it out there like on blast and we're going to mm. we're going we're gonna to see if we can get some people fired up. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, let me let me go ahead and do that. On our end, we really enjoy the community that you're building. It's uh, it's very rare, and I really resonate with the fact of what you said that the people in the engineering department are givers. I remember that video; it, it really has stuck with me, and it's it's really really a wonderful thing. And so, if there's any resources that we can share and to collaborate with, um, even with the, the Better Biomed channel, we love to. And in terms of what we could um, really really use help with. We have uh, donated funds, our own procured funds that we can use for um, a biomedical or engineer guy, um, one or two positions that, and it would be paid. Um, our priority is to make sure that anyone that works with us internationally or even domestically to serve, that they can take care of their families and not have to worry about that, but can focus on loving the people, honestly. And we feel that by us doing a good job in that area, it allows us to really care about people and not think less about ourselves. Um, it would be someone, I uh, don't want to sound intimidating, but someone that maybe loves traveling, would it be, would be down for a trip to Guatemala impromptu or to Kenya um, to honestly face uh, equipment challenges that would be unlike any hospital where you walk in and half the stuff is destroyed and barely working and have to put together, like John said, eight things to make one thing work, um, you know, eating new foods, and um, even beyond that, just being flexible. Because I know in the States, you can kind of specialize in different things. Mm -hmm. But when you go over there, they'll grab you to fix a light bulb, you know, like, right, John? <laughs> mm -hmm. You go out there to fix anything. So um, we do have one or two uh, availabilities. And honestly, anyone that even wants to come and volunteer, lend a hand. I know John would appreciate the help. Michelle would. I would. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a tremendous uh, gift that you're supporting us too, Justin. Oh, 100% guys. So uh, I know that you guys are home based in Shreveport, Louisiana. And also, did, did you guys say that you have an equipment warehouse out in San Diego? Yep, we have a larger uh, series of warehouses in Fresno that's co-partnered with MMI, which is Medical Ministries International, smaller storage in San Diego. But a lot of the, um, you know, good stuff that we try to send is in Shreveport. Okay, excellent. Well, guys, if anybody has any questions or you'd like to see how you can contribute, go ahead. I'm going to leave uh, Andrew, Dr. Wynn, uh, I'm going to leave his information down below so you can reach out to him and see what you can do to help. Look forward to the future where I'm going to be posting live updates of their organization and any, any openings that they have, any opportunities. And also if they have any specific needs, I'll be posting that as well. So guys, Stay tuned, and I'll also be doing live streams. As I said, I'm fired up, man. I'm going to do it. So we're going to do awesome, some live awesome. streams where we actually bring this community together and we actually make a difference. I know we all try to, and we, we think a lot of us are dislocated. We don't think that we're making that big of a difference. Well, you can now, 100%. All right, Andrew, John, and Michelle, thank you very much for this, and uh, I look forward to working with you guys in the future.